What's going on today guys, Tomcat here, and today I'm bringing you guys another Forza 5 drift build. Now, in this drift build, we're going to be focusing on some classic American muscle because we are working with the 1970 Dodge Coronet Super B. Now, absolutely awesome car right here. I love the styling, love the car, and um, also love the power as well. Um, you can see 490 pounds-feet of torque straight from the, straight from the factory, working with a 7-liter V8. 7-liter V8 in this thing, and... That's before we strap all of the upgrades we're going to do um, onto this thing. So um, we're going to ignore the um, community liveries because honestly, this car has so many um, different color options to choose from that uh, you don't really even need the community liveries for this car. Now I'm going to wait until it switches to a different view so we can look at them. So we've got this pink on black, which is actually really cool. Um, I'm sure there are official names for these colors. I just don't know all of them. Um, that green looks nice, especially the green with the black. And I like the black and white. I, wow, that's cool. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about going with either the green and black or the purple and white. I like the purple and white a lot. So we're going to go ahead and go with the purple and white. I think it looks nice. I know some people probably won't like it, but I like it a lot. I think it looks really nice. I think it looks really um really classy actually. Like just for this type of car, um this it just has a nice sense of class to it. Dodge Coronet Super B. Now, for, now for the fun stuff, now for the upgrades, because the thing with these cars, with these muscle cars, these old muscle cars especially, is that they can already go sideways, so that part is already sorted. All you've got to do is add monstrous amounts of power and a little bit of a tune, and other than that, you're fine, you're good to go. wonder how much this thing will drop on race springs. Not a ton, but it's still quite a good looking drop. It's got a nice a nice muscle car stance to it. And when I say stance, I don't mean like retarded camber, like retarded amounts of camber. Um I mean like a performance stance. Like when I think of stance, like a good stance to me is a functional performance stance. When other people think of stance, a lot of people think of camber, you know, like massive amounts of it anyway. Like a little bit of camber is not bad, but massive amounts of camber. Um, I don't like it at all. So, I feel like, I feel like, to me, stance has to be, has to look good and be functional. If you want the best stance, to me, it's got to look good and be functional. And a lot of people would say, oh, so you like air suspension. Mm, not totally. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of iffy on, on air suspension, to be honest. I think it's really cool technology, but I don't know if I would personally put air suspension on a car. I would have to look into it a lot more. Like, I would have to be very, very confident in uh, the actual air suspension that I was using. And no, we're not putting 345s on the back. Um, we're actually going to stick with the stock 235s and see what happens. We're, we're going to see what happens with those. I feel like it's probably a horrible idea. But you know what? I don't care because it's going to make it really interesting and really fun. So we're going to stick um, the American Racing Torque Thrusts because I think they just look good. I mean, they look good on pretty much any old muscle car, um, especially here. They look brilliant. Um, we're going to bump up the size just a little bit. I'm thinking... I'm thinking 18s all around look, would look nice. Either 18s all around or... Mmm... 18s in the back and 17s in the front looks nice. I actually like that. I'm gonna go with 18s in the back, 17s in the front. Nice, nice staggered setup. Um, I don't think we have any... Or, well, maybe we do. No. No. And I'm guessing, yeah, drag hoods, which we don't want. At least I don't want. Now, for the conversion... Let's see what we can do as far as the aspiration goes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're going to strap twin turbos onto this thing. It's going to be massive. It's going to be monstrous. And now time to just build that power up like crazy. But before, wait, before we do that, though, did I miss the drivetrain upgrades? No. Okay, I've done it. I've done those. I'm good to go. We're good. We're fine. All right. Again, back to the power. You don't have to upgrade the carburetors very often, but I don't know when you 
that it's it's cool because on the occasion that you do have to put in like a race carburetor, I don't. It's it's kind of cool. It's kind of special to do that because you rarely ever get to do that anymore. And Forza was a lot of, with a lot of these cars. I mean, yeah, you get to do it more. Say if your if your garage is like totally full of really old muscle cars, but if you're like me and your garage isn't really that full of old muscle cars, it's really special when you actually get to do a race carburetor. Now we're up to 623 horsepower and 625 pounds-feet of torque. That cam really balanced us out, actually. Poured out to what? A seven and a half liter. That is huge! Absolutely huge. I didn't even look at the power after that. Race turbos, 747 horsepower. 792 horsepower, what's the torque? 792 horsepower, 795 pounds-feet of torque. It's so close, so well-balanced. I love it when a car gets like that, and, like, just as far as the stats go, love it when we have stats like that. That right there is perfect. 797 horsepower, 800 pounds-feet of torque. Just a tiny little bit more torque than horsepower. Brilliant balance. Absolutely brilliant balance. Absolutely love that kind of a setup. So we're going to go ahead and put a mild tune on it, and then take it out to the track and see how it does. Now, as far as the... Um, as far as which track we're taking it to, I'm honestly not sure. I've 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 been on Bernie's Alps and um and Prague a lot lately, so I'm thinking about going on. I don't know actually. I'm trying to think here because you know what? I'll wait until I get to the actual tr uh, track list and then I'll decide. And you know what? No, you know what? Somebody requested Yas Marina. Someone requested Yas Marina, and you know what? I know that this car really doesn't suit Yas Marina, but who cares? I'm gonna go straight there, because somebody requested Yas Marina. They were like, you never go on Yas Marina, and you know what? They're right. I never go on Yas Marina. So, we're gonna go ahead and go into Yas Marina and see um, how this thing does, honestly. So, should be pretty interesting, especially since I've now selected the full circuit, which is actually pretty long, and again, more suited to an F1 car than a American muscle car from the 1970s, especially one with 800 pounds feet of torque. So this should be pretty interesting. Let's see how it sounds first off. That's a complete brake stand. I'm hard down on the brakes. Tires are all warmed up, good to go. Spin second. Spin third. Spins fourth. Doesn't get really get traction at all until fourth gear, which is insane. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, that's weird. Okay, that's weird. I'm gonna, yeah, that... <laughs> just the, the balance of the car is, is, uh, different. Kind of like if I thought the uh, that Camaro ZL1 was heavy, um, that makes this car makes that ZL1 look like a Miata in terms of weight. The steering is slow um, and and kind of heavy. The, the oh we've spun it again. Oh that's not brilliant. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do. Um, just a little bit of a tune setup. I'm gonna go ahead and dial out the, uh, negative camera that I did and bring that just a little bit back, actually. Apply that, and then bring the front caster up just a little bit. Apply that. And do a little bit of a tune on the springs, because I feel like there's a little bit that we might have needed to change. Um, and again, this car is just gonna take a lot of getting used to. That's just the long and short of it right there. It's gonna take a lot of getting used to. it sideways one thing's for sure there's never a lack of wheel spin this is one of the reasons why I was kind of worried about taking this car to this track tight corners uh, tight corners and extremely high horsepower classic muscle cars don't go together very well Go, 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 stays. Yes. It's weird because the rear tires are going to be spinning, but 
your speed is still going to be pretty dang low. Looks epic from the outside, though. Looks absolutely beast. <gasps> ah, brakes, 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 brakes. I forgot how heavy it was. I forgot I was in a cruise ship. While still getting used to the immense weight. And again, like I said before, uh, in my Camaro ZL1 build, I'm sure there are people out there that are very, very good at drifting with this style of car. Like, just extremely heavy, um, but still with a ton of power. Um, I'm sure there are people that are absolutely beast at drifting with this kind of a setup. I am not. Um, I am, again, I'm, I drift uh, very light cars. That's just kind of what I'm... That's just kind of what I what I prefer. Because with a light car, I'm always... Like, I'm always on it. I'm always pushing it. I'm always going after it. Always, like, 100% in the throttle most of the time. Um, and with a car like this, you can't be, in a, like, 100% in the throttle most of the time. You have to be... Um, you have to modulate it a lot. And the, your corner entry speed has to be a lot lower most of the time. Um, unless you know how to manage the weight and catch the weight. If you know how to do that, then you're going to be okay. But for a lot of people that drift light cars... Um, Come on! I'm always I'm always scared that the tail end of the car is gonna clip a wall or something because I mean I might as well have a uh, a swimming pool on the back with the, with the size of that trunk. I mean, just constantly just spinning down the track in fourth gear. Not many cars can honestly do that. That that's actually cool because not many cars can honestly just spin down the road in fourth gear. And when you do come across one that can, it's it's it generally is really special. Now, I've kind of gone on about some of the things that I don't like about this car, but what do I like about this car? Um, I love the interior. I love the wood on the dash. Um, I love the sound. Uh, the sound is monstrous. The sound is classic American muscle, and it just sounds angry and in your face. And just like it wants to eat every single car in front of it. Like, this thing is like, oh, Audi R8, mm, I'll, uh, I'll just have that, like, on a sandwich. It's, it's just, I don't know, it's crazy. Especially with the particular front end of this car, the design, it looks mean. It looks like it wants to eat other cars. And, I mean, yes, it wants to eat them, but again, talking about the R8, um, it would never be able to catch it. But even so, it would still look menacing in the rearview mirror. I mean, even if, if I was in an Audi R8 and a Coronet um, Super B pulled up behind me, um, it would still be pretty dang intimidating, even from, you know, an R8 or a Gallardo or um, a 458. It looks intimidating in the rearview mirror of any car. And this time I gotta remember those brakes. And brake, 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 brake. I braked way ahead of time, just because of the fact that, you know what? When it comes down to it, you are driving a cruise ship. You really, really are. Um, I mean, you have a massive boat wheel to drive it with. Look at that thing. I actually wonder how much tire wear we have at this point. Let's see. Tires, uh, okay. Okay, not, not bad. 13... 13.5, 13.7, not too bad. I was assuming um, they'd be a lot more because of the weight of this car and with how much we're spinning up the back tires and smoking off those that rubber, but I was actually thinking it was they were going to be a lot more worn down than that. I'm surprised. Barely got the combo back. I feel like I'd be a little bit worried to take this... Oh, damn it. Yep. I'd be a little bit worried to take this car online, though, because look how big it is. Look how big it is. It's, especially in this color, too, it's a target for, um, for people that just like to ram everybody else in drift lobbies. And generally, what I'll see them do is they'll go for the biggest car they can find. Um, and that's honestly another one of the reasons why I like drifting smaller cars, 
Like, if you're in a, in a GT86 or a 240SX, or uh, especially like a Miata, the trolls will generally ignore you. But when I'm in online drift lobbies, the guys that I see them go for are the people in the big uh, muscle cars. Because they're just easy targets. Because there's, there's so much area to hit. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I, would, I, I, I don't know if this car would be great online. Um, in the scoring department, you just have to get used to it. And if you had a lobby full of clean drivers, I'd have no problem with it. I'd probably no problem with it at all. Um, but that's, again, one of my, uh, concerns about taking this into a public lobby is that I get rammed all the time. But, I don't know, I might, I might actually try it sometime in the future just to see how this thing does as far as online drifting goes. But, um, final opinions on this car, um, I love it. It's got a lot of character to it. It's got a lot of, uh... It's got a lot of history to it. It's got a lot of feel to it. Um, and it's just a unique feeling car just with all of that, like, just with the crazy amount of, um, of power. But you also have to be conscious of the weight. And it's a style that you have to get used to. But once you get used to it, it is very rewarding. So if you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a like. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought of it. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you guys later.